Hello Internet! The mission of this video is to tell about the unbelievably bad customer care Air Canada has demonstrated and also I would like to teach you how to avoid getting into situations like this and how can you potentially earn hundreds of euros instead of losing them. If you're interested, continue watching and you will learn some useful tips which can save you money. Uh, this story happened in June 2019 when I decided to spend 10 days in Canada and uh, in the summer the tickets get really expensive and nobody is rich enough to just go to the flight booking website and conveniently get Helsinki Montreal Helsinki tickets. So I had to get a bit creative and I booked Helsinki Paris Helsinki and Paris Montreal Paris tickets separately which has allowed me to save like 40 or 50 percent of the original price. So that's a good tip too but this is not the point of the story. On the way there everything went smoothly, I arrived without any troubles and I had a great time in Canada and then it was the time to go back. I arrived to the airport well on time and was killing time just roaming around the tax free shops. My flight was scheduled for 9.30 p.m. and at around 9 p.m. the information board starts saying that the flight is delayed, slightly delayed and it's okay, it happens very often actually, used to it, not a big deal. But then uh, it's 9.30 and the information board reschedules the departure of our flight again. Then again, then again. And eventually it doesn't even say at what time are we supposed to be leaving, it just says it's delayed. At this point I start suspecting that the flight might get cancelled. So I start getting worried because that would mean that I will miss also my Paris to Helsinki flight. So I go to the service desk and ask the lady there whether it would be possible to just put me on a flight to Helsinki if my original flight is cancelled and she said that she cannot do anything. Uh, I just should call their service center if I have questions. And people are tired, the airport is getting empty. Uh, they're still neither giving us the estimated time of departure nor telling us that the flight is cancelled. So we were just sitting there waiting and I wasn't really worried even about a long delay because I had a six hours long window between my flight's arrival to Paris and my next flight's departure from Paris. But still it would be nice to know what's happening. So we, we keep sitting there waiting for information. Uh, people start getting impatient, constantly asking the staff members what is the reason of delay. And eventually they tell us that it's the malfunctioning of the door which they're trying to fix. And it's important to remember that the reason the flight got eventually cancelled was the technical issue. Remember that. Around midnight, after having us wait for hours, they finally announced that the flight is officially cancelled and that we will receive a message saying which flight and when will eventually take us to Paris the next day. Um, then it took another hour to go back to the airport entrance through the border control to stay in the line to get information about which hotel we can stay in, uh, then to find a shuttle bath and to get to that hotel. So I arrived there around 1 a.m. I think. At that point I realized that I'm definitely missing my Paris Helsinki flight. So I spent half of the night on the phone trying to get a hold of their customer service team. Closer to the morning a guy from the call center picked up and I asked him to put me on a flight to Helsinki because I missed my flight to Helsinki from Paris because of Air Canada's cancellation and in order to fix this problem they could just put me on a flight to Helsinki, the destinations where I need to go. He said that he cannot do that and I should try talking to a service desk at the airport the next morning. Meanwhile I received a message saying that our new flight will be departing at 10 p.m. This is a 25 hours delay. The hotel kicked us out at noon and after that we were supposed to kill 10 hours at the airport because if you have all your luggage you can't really go and do sightseeing, can you? Once at the airport I went to the service desk, stood in a huge line and then tried explaining them my situation and basically actually begging them to put me on a flight to Helsinki which I could see is available on their website and I was just like guys 
you have caused this problem, why don't you just put me on a flight to Helsinki? You have seats available. This is the free and effortless way for you to make a passenger happy. Why don't you just do it? But no, they said no, we are only responsible for getting you to Paris. And I mean, yeah, but they were also responsible for getting me there 25 hours earlier and they were totally fine not giving a monkey's ass about that part of the agreement. 10 hours later, we finally board our flight, which is operated not by Air Canada, but by their low-budget subsidiary Air Canada Red or something. Low-budget means significant decrease in comfort and the original ticket was for Air Canada, not for their cheaper version. I arrived to Paris 25 hours later, missing my doctor's appointment that I've been waiting for for six months, missing my day at work, wasting my day off on endless sitting in the airport. All of this because it was a mission impossible for Air Canada's customer service to click their mouse two times and put me on a flight that would solve all my problems. Naturally, eventually I had to buy a last minute ticket to Helsinki, which was not cheap because when airline companies sense that you're desperate, they will get everything they can out of you. <laughs> Once I arrived home, I wrote an email to Air Canada asking to compensate me for all the extra expenses I had because of them and all the unnecessary inconveniences they made me go through. 25 hours is a huge delay and it was not caused by something out of their control. I mean, it wasn't a war or a strike or some kind of a cataclysm like an earthquake or a hurricane. It was a technical issue. Technical issues is something airline company has control over. They could have had a backup plane, they could have had a skilled team of technicians who could get rid of this problem, or at least they could have tried to minimize the damage they're causing to everyone else's plans. But they just chose to do nothing. So here's the lovely exchange I had with Air Canada customer service and their response. So in our long email exchange, I asked them to either compensate me for my expenses or to give me some kind of a lifetime long discount code. And what they have offered me is some one-time promotion code in order to use which I would have to travel with them again. What a generous offer! And once I told them that this doesn't make any sense, that I don't want their code, I just want my money back, they basically told me to leave them alone. Here is their email. Continuing to exchange emails will not change our position. Respectfully, we consider this matter closed. Beautiful, isn't it? Just beautiful. So basically, they refused to put me on a flight convenient for me, even though they did have the seats available. They have refused to cover all my extra expenses which were caused by their poor operations management and in order for me to get something out of the situation they have suggested me to pay them even more money and to trust them with my plans again while knowing that they can cancel the flights whenever they feel like it without any consequences. What a great deal! Uh, now we have arrived to the part where I teach you how to avoid being screwed over by companies like this. Basically, the rule is try choosing European companies when you need to do a transatlantic flight. The thing is, uh, the EU laws and regulations actually protect the passengers against severe flight disruptions and greedy airline companies like Air Canada. In 2004, which is 15 years ago by the way, the European Union has decided that the passengers have the right to be protected from a behavior demonstrated by Air Canada in this case. Oh my god, what these crazy Europeans are doing? Treating passengers like human beings? Shocking, isn't it, Air Canada? <laughs> so, if there is a major delay, overbooking, or the airline company just decides to cancel the flight, the passengers have the right to receive 250, 400 or 600 euros in compensation, depending on the length of the flight, given 
that the airline is headquartered in the EU or the trip starts at an EU airport. You can read about this in more details, I will leave the link in the description. By the way, Air Canada is perfectly aware of these rules, as you can see from the email they sent me. But they're happily taking advantage of the fact that they're headquartered in Canada and the flight was not departing from the EU, which has allowed them to just ignore the complaining passenger. Convenient, isn't it? So with any European company like Air France or KLM, I would have received 600 euros on a situation like this. With Air Canada, I get an email saying that I should stop bothering them. Air Canada can legally cancel their flights whenever they feel like it, ruining all your plans, making you pay for their mistakes and get away with that. If you complain, you will get some coupon in order to redeem which you need to pay a few hundred extra to Air Canada. And their overall attitude is too bad we've ruined all your plans, too bad you ended up losing money, but we frankly don't care, stop bothering us, stop writing to us, not our problem, not our concern, goodbye. How can this be acceptable in the 21st century? I just don't get it. Please share this video in order to spread awareness and to save as many passengers as possible for getting into a situation like this. I personally will try my best to never ever ever fly with Air Canada. But I'm really scared of the situation where it will be the only option available. And I'm pretty sure that for people who are living in Canada, often Air Canada is the only option available. I believe that applying this kind of pressure may actually help to force the government to pass some laws which forbid this kind of treatment of the passengers because if it worked in the EU, it can probably eventually work everywhere else. Meanwhile, if you need to do a transatlantic flight, be safe and choose one of the European companies. I still get super mad when I think about that situation, but you know what can cheer me up? Your likes. If you like this video, please click the like button and I will see you in my next video which is also going to be about unfair treatment of people because I'm planning to tell about my slavery, oh, I'm sorry, my internship in the US. If you're interested, subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye!